Hello dear students, the civil war which was a result of the friction between the king and the parliament was a very important chapter in the political history of England. Here in this class we are going to analyze the factors that led to the civil war. By this time I am sure that you know uh, the, uh, about the growth of absolutism or absolutist monarchies in England and you have to know that it coincided with the period of the Stuart rulers. So uh, in this class I will be giving you uh, an idea about the rule of James first and also the role of Charles first the son uh, James first followed by his son Charles first and it was during the role of Charles first that the civil war happened there was a clash between the supporters of the king the royalists and those who opposed the king okay so that is the uh, case of the civil war so let us see uh, the factors that led to the civil war and the events that happened during the rule of the first ru steward ruler that was james first so james first 1603 1625 that was uh, a time that he ruled over england and he uh, when he became the king he was very much an upholder of the divine right theory. He believed that he was sent by God. He believed that the parliament would be subservient to him, uh, that they would obey whatever he wanted. Uh, he knew that uh, to a great extent uh, he could exercise his whims and fancies. So that was his idea when he became the ruler. But now you could see that parliament was just the opposite of what he had thought because it, by that time, especially the House of Commons, hope you know that two houses are there, House of Lords and House of Commons. Now, the House of Commons during the period of stewards, uh, it, it was in fact made by rich uh, people, that means um, uh, landholders, the countryside, the gentry, those who had very powerful social position, the squire class as you can call them in England. So they in fact formed the backbone of the opposition against the steward kings, the gentry who were very powerful. They wanted position they wanted uh, better trading uh, conditions etc so we could see that um, the interest which the ruler had uh, to assert divine right theory uh, clashed with that of the interest of the gentry or uh, the powerful land uh, owning class so that is what you can see now uh, you also have to know that uh, this period in fact uh, was one that witnessed the growth of Puritanism in England. Okay, now the Puritans were people who wanted to uh, create a church which was totally free from the control of Catholicism or Catholic Church as such. So they, in fact, wanted to introduce norms. Uh, they wanted to, in fact, um, make it a better situation for them where uh, they could decide on their own, their interests, religious interests. So they wanted to choose their own religion and they were prepared to fight to any extent um, in reaching their goal. And that is about Puritans. So you could see that Puritan, um, uh, Puritans, those who were Puritans in their beliefs, they were greatly responsible for creating that resentment during the period of James I. So that was the role of Puritans. Now, you could see that there were uh, two major reasons uh, that James was, of course, fought with the parliament. One was regarding uh, finance and the other one was religion. So, King always wanted money because he was involved in a number of wars. He, uh, for instance, James first was a spendthrift and he had a very extravagant uh, court, expensive court, and he wanted more and more money. So, parliament at a point was not ready to um, allow the king to uh, in increase the taxation. So, he resorted to methods like selling the monopolies, sale of monopolies. He imposed duties. Uh, for on lots of uh, cases and that we call impositions were charged okay so you could see how there were different methods which the king resorted to raise taxes when he found the parliament was of course not supporting now uh, you could see that the parliament and the ruler that is here James I and uh, especially the house of commons they were fighting over numerous issues predominantly finance and religion and it became more or like a constitutional struggle. Now uh, that was about the rule of James first 
whose uh, period was not a uh, one that was happy as far as the relationship between the parliament and the ruler was concerned there were so many uh, cases when the parliament especially the house of commons uh, they uh, objected the king's decisions now he was succeeded by his son charles first charles first his period 1625 to 49 1649 now it was this ruler who in fact um, uh, participated who was forced to participate in the civil war and he finally Uh, was killed or got beheaded so charles first let us see what uh, kind of a ruler he was now he was like his father very much a believer of the divine right theory but he was a very attractive person who was a man of taste in the sense he loved uh, ceremonies he loved he had an aesthetic sense he was an artist who enjoyed beautiful things and so he in fact wanted ceremonies and rituals that he believed he uh, he could enjoy more uh, his life so he was a man of taste he was an artist basically now uh, the main problem that uh, this person had was that he in fact failed to understand the interest of the people that he ruled over now the his first parliament met in 1625 in a truculent mood truculent means uh, in a mood to fight or adibidi kodanulla oru oru mood la irunna avaru undayirunnathu now he was also like his father known for his hatred against puritans now uh, you could see that parliament did not like charles first either and they passed taxes like tonnage and poundage for a year usually uh, this is uh, the king is eligible uh, for such taxes the, his entire life but here in the case of charles was the parliament passed it only for a year now, what is tonnage what is poundage uh, like uh, these were um, uh, duties uh, on uh, imported goods and um, a huge profit went to the ruler so king could enjoy that he could in fact live a luxurious life on uh, such taxes tonnage and poundage but that was in fact given uh, for the entire life of a ruler but here in the case of charles first parliament decided to give it only for a year and this humiliated the ruler very much why in his case they were not ready to um, give it for his entire life and why they had restricted for a year tonnage and poundage now uh, you could see that king had participated in wars and that was a spanish war and he uh, when uh, you know like when a king participates in a war definitely that would uh, lead to financial crisis and so was the case with charles first he was forced to convene the parliament again in 1626 he wanted to raise taxes and without their consent he could of course do that now the parliament criticized the king vehemently and he answered by dissolving the parliament that was what he did now after the parliament got dissolved that was the second parliament what he did was he tried to raise funds through forced loans which was again something uh, beyond the control of the parliament which the parliament did not like now when there were a lot of protests he was forced to summon the third parliament that was in 1628 okay now here in this third parliament a very important charter was drafted by the parliamentarians and the king was forced to agree and that was a petition of rights 1628 petition of rights is considered to be a very important charter of a very civilized nation that was uh, england in those days now it was passed in the year 1628 it was passed by um, uh, parliament was forced parliament for in fact forced it upon uh, king charles first okay now let's see uh, what all the ruler had to agree there were four main, main points first one no taxation without the consent of the parliament if the king wanted to raise a new tax then definitely he had to get the consent of the parliament without that he was not supposed to get anything from uh, anybody in that land now second one no imprisonment without cause that means if king has any grievances or grudge against any particular person without any proper um, reason he couldn't be imprisoned or put behind the bars third point no quartering of soldiers on subjects otherwise known as billeting billeting of soldiers means uh, soldiers would be employed in your own home or uh, they would be placed around uh, your residence so that would be uh, very disturbing for citizens so no quartering of soldiers why would a king 
quarter soldiers in a particular place because uh, when the king uh, would be suspicious that the people would revolt against him or they would uh, create any problems that is why he places his soldiers but here very clearly the petition of rights said that the king did not have any rights to quarter soldiers billeting of soldiers would not be allowed no martial law in peace time that means uh, everything has to be relaxed during um, situations when there were no wars peace time so this was what the bill of right uh, sorry the petition of rights sorry the petition of rights which was signed in 1628 petition of rights now here this was a very important charter and the king was forced to agree um, all the conditions which the parliament had proposed okay now the third parliament got adjourned in 1629 and that was mainly because of a lot of friction between um, the house of commons and the king now after this point that is after 1629 you have to know that for 11 years uh, it was a rule by the emperor himself he was not ready to convene the parliament so 11 years despotism tyranny could be seen uh, where you could see the ruler uh, 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 never convene the parliament he never consulted members of the parliament and he tried to rule according to his own whims and fancies now here you could say see how the king claimed that the parliament was trying to exert a universal overswaying power which belonged only to him that's what he believed I'm not, I'm not going to give it to the parliament and I don't want to give any powers to the uh, members that's what he said and he believed very much in the divine right notion 11 years from 1629 to 1640 you could see Charles I ruling without parliament so that is what is absolutism or absolutist monarchy and he was a typical example of an absolutist monarch now, uh, finance and religion were, as I told you, in the case of James I, here in the case of his son, Charles I also. These were two reasons which again um, created a lot of, uh, what to say, situations where um, parliamentarians at king and king, you know, they uh, were in a position to fight against each other. Now, here you could see how uh, he imprisoned a person, J Sir John Eliot. He, he was, in fact... Uh, the person um, who spoke a lot about uh, the privileges of parliamentarians and parliament members so he was imprisoned so that was in fact a move taken by the ruler against uh, the members of the parliament he imprisoned sir john Eliot. now even um, when he did not consult the parliament we could see that king um, went to that extent of collecting taxes through a different ways and that was one was ship money now what is ship money you know that uh, Tudors possessed a huge navy and of course towards too there were a number of ships that had to be repaired and of course uh, it was uh, a practice to provide very uh, good ships to the navy so he wanted to make that ships for the navy and he wanted to collect money for that that was ship money to repair ships to make better ships for the british navy so he collected unlawful taxes in the name of ship money without the consent of the parliament now another major criticism charles faced was that as i told you he was a person who was very much artistic he liked practices ceremonies and rituals and he was always called as a high churchman which the puritans did not like puritan means they were people who wanted pure life simple austere living and they did not like the idea where the ruler supported ceremonies and sacraments and rituals which involved a lot of money and also uh, time so he was criticized as a high churchman who the ruler so king's advisor at this time was a person by name william lord he was a bishop okay william lord in the next slide you can see how william lord who was uh, the advisor during the 11 years at 1629 1640 he was a person who was very much against puritans he in fact put down a lot of um, puritan practices conventicles okay he put down he was very firm with the puritans and he had william lord and of course charles first had a code which was known as a court of high commission and this particular code was meant to punish the offenders so a number of puritans were punished and they were imprisoned so this led to a situation where a lot of puritans uh, migrated from england to um, america 
Puritan immigration was a result. So this was mainly due to the, um, uh, what to say, uh, uh, harsh rule of Charles I and his supporter William Lord. Now, now after uh, a long period, that is 11 years, in 1640, King again wanted, uh, he was desperate in fact, and he convened the parliament in 1640, that was known as the short parliament because it was uh, barely in uh, office for three uh, weeks, that is why it was called um, short parliament. King wanted to raise taxes, parliament was not ready to listen to him, they had a lot of uh, grievances which they wanted the king uh, to address. So again friction king dismissed the parliament within three weeks and it was called uh, the short parliament here again during this time a number of wars happened the second bishop war happened in 1640 the first one had happened in 1639 so second bishops war where you could see this was again friction related to religion now now after the short um, parliament uh, got dispersed again the king was forced to convene parliament that was the long parliament uh, which, which you can say began in 1640 and uh, ended in fact took a very long period 1640 began uh, in 1640 now why did he again convene parliament charles was because he did not have money nor did he have any army worth the name so he wanted to raise again uh, money again now, um, the commoners at this time, they were very much sure that this time they would put an end to the unconstitutional rule by Charles I. And um, they, were, they had a very active leader uh, that was John Pym, who was, you know, very bold and assertive. And uh, we could see that Parliament and King, again, they came, you know, they, sat, uh, they locked horns against each other and the struggle began with a long parliament and very soon we could see how uh, the whole of uh, uh, England got divided into two groups a group that supported the king they were the royalists and the group who opposed the king and the civil war began so the next class we'll discuss the cause of the civil war and finally how it ended with a um, beheading of the ruler Charles I that was in 1649 you know how a ruler got uh, killed by people and that was something very strange that it shouldn't have happened but it happened in English history and we'll be coming to that in the next class that is the cause of the English civil war okay bye bye